Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we'll be talking about visual shaders and flipbooks in Godot 3. If you've even watched the UV isolation video, this is a direct continuation of that. VFX artists will use these a lot to go frame by frame in something like fire or smoke. And then in a way, a lot of 2D games will use something similar to this, like sprite sheets. So essentially a flipbook is a texture that's broken up into several frames. And in this case, this is a five by five frame. And the goal is to be able to animate from zero to four and then go down to five, go to nine and repeat until we get to the end. So in this initial setup, we have our UVs being decomposed so we can drive the X and the Y separately. And then we're dividing the X and the Y by the rows and by the columns. So we're dividing it by five in this situation. And then we have these adds so that we can offset them. So I can move my X independently and I can get up to four and it'll wrap around. And I can push my Y down, five, 10, 15, 20, and it'll loop back around. Now there's a few issues with this setup currently. The first one is that we're working with decimals because when we offset, we're going from zero to one. And when we get to one, it wraps back around. This would be a lot nicer if I could just put in one, two, three, four, and would move to that frame. Now the next issue is when we get to the four visually, it wraps back around. When what we actually want is we want to make sure that when it gets to four, it'll jump down in the UV space to five. So we're gonna fix our decimals first. And the way that we do that is once again, we're gonna divide by the amount of rows and by the amount of columns that we have. So we're gonna divide by five on the X. And now you'll see when you put in one, it'll go to one, you put in two, it'll go to two, three, four, but five still doesn't work. And we'll get to that in one second. There's one more feature I wanna to add to this. So right now, as we go from zero to one, we get these decimal points and it's just sliding between the two. But what I want is, I want it to snap. I want to go from zero to one to two. So what we do here is we add in a floor. And what this is gonna do is, it's gonna take your whole number and any decimal point that you have is gonna push it down and remove the decimal number. So as I increase this now, it's still zero, still zero, still zero. Now it's one, still one, still one, two. And the next thing that we want is when we get past four, we want to be able to jump down on the UVs. After we get to four, we want to go down a row and then we also want to offset back to five. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our main X driver to drive the Y offset. So we want to take the X driver and we want to divide by the amount of rows that we have. And in this case, it's five. So five divided by five is one. And then if this was four, four divided by five is 0 0.8. And once again, what we can do here is we can floor this value so that if it's 0 0.8, it's gonna stay at zero. This right here is going to drive which row you're on. Now, before we hook this in, there is one last thing we need to do. Like our X, we need to divide by the amount of rows that we have. This will determine the offset. So we have four divided by five, which is 0 0.8, and then we floor it, that's gonna bring it down to zero, and then zero divided by five is zero. If this is five, it's gonna be five divided by five, which is one, we floor that and that's gonna be one. And then we divide one by five and we get 0 0.2 and this will drive the offset. So let's try that out now. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is working, this is exactly what we want. So now we have a main driver that's just telling us what frame to be on. If you wanted to animate this, you could use time, and then after time, if we add a multiply, we can then multiply the rate with the scalar constant. Set this to one, we'll plug this into there, and we'll plug it into there. All right guys, that covers visual shaders and flipbooks in Godot 3. If you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.